Hello everybody, Be Mad Always here. Big release, but it's a bit delayed, but we are back. We are back with another weekly heavy metal album review. This time is Dream Theater, a view from the top of the world. Released by Inside Out Music back in October 22nd, 2021. Now, of course, this band needs no introduction. The American progressive metal band Dream Theater is an institution of progressive metal music. As of 2018, they have sold over 12 million records worldwide and received two Grammy Award nominations. Dream Theater is not only one of the creators of progressive metal, but also still one of the most popular bands in the genre. While I'm not a fanboy, I do like this band a lot, and it's one of my favorite bands of all time. I have all their albums, I've been to uh, many of their concerts, and even though I'm not sure why, I also <laughs> bought uh, The Astonishing, which is really not a good album, but I've seen their live many times, and with that said, I can be critical and have high expectations on this band. And I must say that the Mangini era has been a hit and miss situation for me, but I won't get into the drummer discussion because that's pointless, it is what it is. So let's talk about A View from the Top of the World, which is their 15th studio album and already the fifth one with Mike Mangini on drums who replaced Portnoy in 2010. The album follows 2019's distance over time. This was of course accelerated by the pandemic and the cancelled tours etc. The band said they were not really planning going back into the studio that early. They still want to tour for distance over time but things happened and they went to the studio. And what a view from the top of the world brings the band back to a very safe territory in which they sound a lot like scenes from a memory or albums like Change of Seasons, the early stuff. This is somewhat a reaction to the previous album where the band wanted to be heavy and concise. You remember Distance Over Time was a lot of songs and short songs. This time they allowed their freedom and as a result the new effort is like the albums before Distance Over Time, a long album with only seven songs but of course all of them relatively long. The title track especially is the epic closer with over 20 minutes and broken down in three parts. It is the first epic since Illumination Theory from 2013 self-titled album. Now, three singles were released to support the album. The Alien on August 13th, 2021, followed a month later by Invisible Monster and in October by Awaken the Master. Each single was together with a music video. The first single is also the album opener and it's called The Alien. It's an almost 10 minutes with a heavy intro where the guitar riff and the drumming are the highlights. Later the intensity goes down and we have a beautiful guitar melody before we get into the verse of the song. While it all sounds good, it's too familiar. It's almost like a combination of parts from older songs refurbished into a new song. And that bothers me and I can't get it into the song because of that. Unfortunately, that's not the only moment that Dream Tears sounds like a copy of themselves in this album. Then the second single was Invisible Monster, Monster with a six and a half minutes is one of the shortest songs of the album with a dynamic verse, uh, verses, engaging bridges and a catchy chorus, this was certainly a good choice for a single. The melodic and mid-tempo guitar work is also a nice change of pace. The last single, Awaken the Master, is the song using the Majesty 8, which is a Pet Petrucci new 8-string signature model. It sounds thick and low-end, but 
it's the same kind of riff variation that is repeated all over the album. I must say that the keys sound good through this song and the nice nice piano sound is also a very very different way of uh, of portraying the the keyboards then we have other songs obviously in the album that are not singles answering the call that is a song that why are not bringing something new is one that works for me because it's sketchy and has some nice melodies sleeping giant is an okay song with a good instrumental intro but then it falls flat to me and not that interesting then transcending time is one of the most straightforward songs on the album also around six and a half minutes it's a mid-tempo aor influenced song and the interesting thing that it works for me at least as a one-off i would i would hate to have a full album with this kind of song but as one song in the album really worked for me it's engaging and it's fun reminds me a bit of 80s rush especially due to the guitar arrangements and the way that the synths sound and for the record that's a good thing so i like rush in the 80s as well and of course the epic title track a 20 minute journey in three parts this is one of my favorites on the album it's dynamic it's inventive there there are uh, or orchestrations other guitar sounds rather than you know the low end riffs with the boo -boo 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 zeros uh, i like the solos on the song the slow tempo ballad section in the middle it all works here it's a nice epic song final note is that this recording sessions marked during tears their first collaboration with andy sneep of the of course the legends of uh, engineering and mixing uh, and mixing of records he mastered and mixed the album and he also recently worked with Petrucci on his uh, second solo album, Terminal Velocity, last year. And he liked the experience and how they could use him for Dream Theater as well. And that was an amazing choice. It's also the first Dream Theater album to be recorded in their Dream Theater headquarters, so the DTHQ, which they built a new studio in it. They recorded other albums there before, like Liquid Tension Experiment 3, and the, the solo albums from Petrucci and needless to say it sounds awesome now if I'm being picky here my biggest problem with the album is that it's basically Dream Theater in autopilot everything sounds familiar and safe due to the many ideas being recycled from previous albums you can definitely play the game spot that riff or arrangement idea from previous records unfortunately that bothers me and it's a bummer but i'm aware that it won't be a problem for many people especially the crowd that wants more of the same you will love this because it is more of the same i can't say that it's a bad album though obviously the musicianship as always is exceptional it's proggy it's catchy at times memorable choruses and also one of their best sounding albums ever but to me the music writing was disappointing and the overall direction too safe and predictable so that's also why to me it can't be more than good <laughs> for those reasons i've given it 78 over 100 a good album but not at par with their most uh, uh, interesting albums from their incredible discography that's it for today. Thanks for being here, for listening, and be mad always.